everybody! Welcome to A Survivor's Guide to Hell, the podcast. I'm PJ Aubrey, here to walk you through this pessimist-friendly guide to finding the silver lining. Each week, we pick an unpleasant topic and share stories and information that will hopefully help you laugh, help you find a bright side, or even change your perspective on something. Thank you so much for listening. Today, our unpleasant topic is... Mistakes. Frankly, this podcast is probably a waste of your time if you've never made one. In fact, all of you listeners who have never once made a mistake, go ahead and turn this off. For the rest of you, keep listening. I've got news. You want to know how I chose this week's topic? It was last week's podcast. The content was good, I think, but the recording, not so much. There was microphone grumbling everywhere. You could tell when I had to re-record certain parts by the way my tone didn't match. It almost sounded like it was my first time trying to record a podcast. In other words, I made a lot of mistakes. It doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much money is in your bank account, what country you live in, or your gender and color, blah, blah, blah. You make mistakes. It's one of the few things that everyone has in common with every other human being. We all need to eat to live, we will all eventually die, and we all make mistakes. It's unifying. Funny then how it seems like mistakes separate us. You may feel you don't belong with certain people because of the mistakes you've made. And let's be honest, you have felt that other people don't belong with you because of the mistakes they've made. Sometimes that's justified. Sometimes we let these things define ourselves and others way more than we should. When it comes to mistakes, there's something that we don't share in common. The way we view them. Take a moment to reflect with me. When you make a mistake, how do you react? Are you filled with frustration or guilt? Or are you more likely to think, oh, that's how it works? Your reaction probably depends. But on what? According to psychologist Carol Dweck, there's basically two different ways to approach a mistake. There's the fixed mindset, where you assume you're fundamentally inadequate for certain challenges and that your brain is not capable of overcoming these weaknesses. Then there's the growth mindset. A growth mindset means many things, including a tendency to look at mistakes as a natural consequence of getting better. A growth-minded person often looks at failures as learning exercises that will inevitably come as you progress. No formal tuition or college applications, just getting classed on how to succeed. Today we're going to explore some mistakes with our growth-minded glasses on. I'll invite my childhood friend to speak with me about a mistake we've both made that's haunted me for about 13 years. Then we'll examine the stories of a few people who made history by making mistakes, and who changed all our lives while they were at it. Let's do this! Act 1. A 13-year-old mistake that still haunts me. I recently published two articles about teenagers and what it was like to be one of them. Geez, talk about a fertile field for mistakes. Teenagers' brains have not finished developing, particularly in the critical thinking department, and there are so many chances to make a mistake that will follow you for decades to come. Luckily, the teenage me had the right resources to avoid the kind of mistakes that could have placed the rest of my life on a much bumpier path. But in my worst moments, my critical thinking skills were still garbage. I managed to earn my fair share of regrets, one of which has haunted me for about 13 years now. It still eats at my stomach lining on occasion. My friend Nisha was there, making that mistake right along with me. It seemed so inconsequential at the time that I wondered if she even remembered. So I told her there was a memory I'd like to discuss, and we set up a phone call. Are you ready to talk about this one memory that I have? I'm so excited! Okay. I've I've just been on, on my toes. I'm so excited. It might sound like a really small thing to you, but it was big to me, and mostly because I feel I'm responsible. You were with me. But I don't feel like you were the one making the worst choices. So, so you might hear and go, really, that's what, that's what you wanted to talk to me about? But to me, like, I want to seek restitution for this. Let's do it. Okay. 
I, I was on the internet the other day. It reminded me of a review that you and I wrote at my dad's computer in Somerset. Okay. Is this ringing any bells? I'm remembering, but I, what, and I don't remember what we're reviewing, but this is bringing it up. I'm remembering that we did write a review. Okay. Um, we were on iTunes and we were probably looking for a different song and we happened upon one called Whispers in My Brain. Do you remember that at all? I do know we found some weird songs on YouTube on iTunes. This one was called Whispers in My Brain. Uh Uh-huh. There was a lot of strange music in the background. And it went, I can't escape when my hands are tied. Whispers in my brain, whispers in my brain. Yes, I remember! (laughs) Okay. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Okay, so you and I thought that was a really strange song. And for teenagers, strange equals, usually equals bad, right? Like, oh, that, that's weird, so it sucks. So, like crummy teenagers, we <laughs> left an eviscerating review. We just like, this made my ears bleed, I think was one of the sentiments. This is the worst trash I've ever heard, something like that. Yes. We thought that that was... <laughs> the worst published music ever. Yes. Because we were experts <laughs> at the ripe age. I'm going to say between 12 and 14. <laughs> we were connoisseurs and we knew good music. And I don't know if you remember, we actually clicked through some of the other songs to see if it was all this crazy. And it was actually quite normal, professionally done. Yeah. It was just that song, right? Oh my gosh. Okay. I actually feel so disgusting about that review. Like, I know that was a different person. Like, 13-year-old Phoebe is not 26-year-old Phoebe. Exactly. But that was, that was a horrible thing to do. And here's why. I don't know if you know this part because I don't think you were here for this part. I, I thought of that song later. I don't know how much later. But I went back on just to see... I don't know why, and it was still there. And our review was the only review. Oh no! It was the only review of this album. Oh. Which means this was probably someone starting out. Like, yes. they'd, they'd actually done a pretty good job for people who were on their own. Like, it sounded professional. Most of their songs were. Yeah. Um. I mean, they weren't my style, but they were good. They were probably somebody's style. They weren't ear bleeding bad. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> the only review for this person who had put their dreams up there on iTunes was our um, awful trash made my ears bleed, blah, blah, blah. And I tried to look it up the other day when I was having this oh, memory. No. And it's not there anymore, which could have happened for a number of factors, but. I get the feeling our review being the only review for a long time may have contributed. Um, you know that my memory is not the best. I'm definitely not an elephant. (laughs) But I do remember doing this. As soon as you sang that line, I can't think when my hands are tied, whispers in my brain. I was going to sing with you, whispers in my brain for the (laughs) second line. I do remember this. And you know what? It was an odd song. It was not a mainstream um, genre type. So, uh, like you said, to a 12, 14 year old, oh, this is terrible. Nobody would ever like this. I I remember writing this review, and I I think I'm in your boat. I feel so bad <laughs> that that's the only review for this person who, I mean, that might be the only thing they ever put on iTunes. And here are these keyboard trolls saying, oh, this is garbage, like, <laughs> my ears bleed. That is, that is so harsh. And, I mean, if there had been at least a few other reviews, right. I think I'd feel a little less bad. Oh, my gosh. I just, like, I feel so bad, too. Yeah. I'm like, I hope that we didn't, like, crush someone's dreams. Can you? Oh, <sighs> 
I know, and I hope, I really hope that's giving us too much credit, that our own review for someone's dreams, but, like, I'm, I'm trying to produce now, I'm trying to get this podcast out there, and other things, and you probably either have or will be in the same boat, where in some way or another you're advertising yourself, and it's really vulnerable, and I know if, if I had, like, one review representing my work, and it was that tastelessly cruel, it would hurt. It'd be very hard. And I think it would really hurt my growth. Is there anything on, on the, like, <laughs> excessively nominal chance that this podcast will ever reach that artist? Is there anything you'd like to say? <laughs> there are tears. Yeah. Um, please, please, please understand and forgive stupid teenagers who have access to the internet. Stupid teenagers. If that artist ever hears this, please know. It was just dumb teenagers thinking they were hilarious. Not at that point in their lives realizing how much a negative review can actually affect ratings. Um, We we didn't know what we were doing. (laughs) And we're not, like, we don't make music. We have no idea what we were doing. Right. I would like to say, I wish you knew how old we were. Because if you thought maybe we were 18 plus, that would be a different story than two stupid 13 year olds. And I would like to apologize. I actually, I feel really bad about it. Like I I get that squiggly worm feeling sometimes when I think about it. Like that was so slimy for us to do. And I mean, we were teenagers, which means our responsible brains hadn't developed yet, and we didn't really understand the implications of what we were doing. But if we were actually trying to be good, kind people, which teenagers are capable of and responsible yeah. for, we, we wouldn't have done that. So No. I, and, <laughs> like, honestly, thinking about it now, because, like, I remember writing that review, in no way, shape, or form did it go through my brain like, the person who poured their heart and soul into this music is gonna read this. Yeah. And if I had ever read anything like that, especially at that age, even now for something I poured my heart and soul into, it would just break me. It would break my heart. Dang it, Phoebe, now I'm gonna sit and I'm sorry. Just, you know, roll around with this all randomly. That'll be the thing that pops into my brain when I'm trying to fall asleep. And then I sit and think about it for two hours, and I'm like, I'm so worried about that person. Maybe, like I said, the odds that that person will hear this is so small. So share this episode. Share our shame. Please. But, um... Get our pleading apology out to the world. Yes, I, I just want you to know, I... For better or for worse, I actually hope you get some kind of satisfaction and pleasure from our guilt. That is the gift I want to give you. Like, but we carried for what? 13 more years? <laughs> yeah. For a... Yeah. I think the only thing I can add is to anyone and everyone listening to this <laughs> podcast, this episode, learn from us. Don't make the stupid mistake that you will think about 13 years later and you'll still cringe at yourself. It costs nothing to be kind. Mm-hmm. And beyond reviewing something on the internet, just be kind to people, you know, be kind on the internet, be kind in person, be kind in your transactions, and don't, then you won't regret it. I don't, I've never in my life regretted being kind to someone. That is great. That is really good. And you, you reminded me, on the producer side, if anyone's listening to this, he's made something and put it out there and gotten any form of cruel response. Just remember that there's like 13 year old girls who think they're so funny, but really it's like part of their brains have been removed because they're literally not developing. And that might be the cruel post or uh, review, comment, whatever that you're seeing. It's It probably is. The crueler it is, the, the less developed or intelligent <laughs> that, that person writing it probably is. No, really. I think that's, I think that's a good, Thing to live by. Yeah. <laughs> I would say there's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> well, thank you. All right. Well, let's try and get this podcast to that poor mystery person that I can't find on the internet, and I hope it's not because of us. 
Some of you may wonder how a story like this was selected for a podcast about good news and silver linings. We were tasteless and unkind. We may have left a wound in someone's feelings, or even their career. But there is a silver lining in all this. It comes in the form of a lesson. Sometimes, when a person is cruel to you, they grow enough heart to regret it. You might even say they begin to care about you and what's become of you. Sometimes, like Nisha and I, they look back and wish they could apologize to you in person. So what's the growth-minded takeaway for me? First, when in doubt, err on the side of kindness. If you don't like how regret feels, that is the best way by far. And second, when someone is cruel to me in the same way Nisha and I were cruel to that musician, it'll be easier to cope with, knowing there's a solid chance that person's brain never reached its developmental finish line. If the artist of Whispers in My Brain ever listens to this, I do hope you'll drop a line. I want to buy your album. I want to listen to each song and leave a review about all your shining qualities. I want to have a chat, maybe even buy you a coffee, and see where you are now. Wherever it is, I hope it's wonderful. You know what else, my dear mystery musician? I'm on iTunes now. You can leave a review. Act two, three historical mistakes that changed your life. Usually when someone wants to change the world, it takes a lot of deliberate hard work. Good folks and bad folks, peacemakers and warlords, innovators and credit takers all have years of diligence ahead of them if they want to achieve so much as one line in the next generation's history books. But occasionally the world is changed by mistake though you probably won't find that in many motivational speeches. We're going to talk about three of those world-changing mistakes today. Three failures that have touched your life, or maybe even saved it. First, Alexander Fleming ruins his science project. In 1928, a Scotsman named Alexander Fleming was in the middle of his growing season. Not for tomatoes or carrots, but the bacteria Staphylococcus. You've probably heard of Staph, Nowadays, a staph infection is typically easy to treat, but like many bacterial infections of the time, staph was more likely to kill you in 1928. Mr. Fleming placed a sample of the bacteria in a petri dish. Then, the man went on a vacation. Little did he know that his staphylococcus garden would take an unexpected turn while he was away, with worldwide consequences in its wake. When Fleming came back to his petri dishes, they were infected with a nasty case of mold a variety of mold that was killing his staphylococcus. And not just any mold kills staph. Fleming had discovered how to cultivate penicillium mold. In other words, he had created the main ingredient to penicillin. After Fleming's discovery and some finessing of the mold growing techniques, penicillin sharply cut down the number of bacterial related deaths. In those days, battlefield infections and mild kitchen cuts could both bring you to your deathbed. And I'm grateful that Fleming didn't just huff at those contaminated petri dishes and start a new staff collection. The estimates are rough, but I've read that about 80 million to 200 million people have lived because of Fleming's discovery. Maybe the next time you make the mistake of leaving your leftovers in the fridge for too long, you should think of Alexander Fleming and the tens of millions of people he saved with just a little mold. Ruth Wakefield's Botched Baking Just two years after Fleming had found his moldy miracle, a woman named Ruth Wakefield realized she forgot to put something on her grocery list. Ruth cooked for an inn. If she ran out of an ingredient, a lot of guests were out of luck. So, when she realized she didn't have the right kind of chocolate to finish her chocolate cookies, Ruth Wakefield was in a bit of a bind. Boy, do I relate to this. Many a time have I leaned my head forlornly against my refrigerator door, googling how to substitute blah blah blah, and occasionally taking a gamble rather than hauling off to the grocery store for just one silly ingredient. I wonder if Ruth was feeling the same when she broke up some Nestle chocolate and mixed it in the dough, hoping it would melt throughout each bite and give her the chocolate cookie she was looking for. It didn't. When she pulled her little failures out of the oven, they were just pale cookies freckled with chocolate chips. But if you've ever bitten into a chocolate chip cookie, 
you know that this wasn't such a failure after all. That's right, Ruth invented the chocolate chip cookie and they were a hit. She ended up receiving a lifetime supply of chocolate as a thank you from Nestle, who printed the recipe on their products and watched their sales skyrocket. Number three, Percy Spencer nearly microwaves himself. In 1946, a man named Percy Spencer was attempting to improve the power of magnetron tubes when his lunch break hit. He reached in his pocket only to find that it had become a gooey mess from the peanut cluster bar he had placed inside. Spencer sensed this was not merely a product of body heat. According to Popular Mechanic, understandably curious just what the heck had happened, Spencer ran another test with the magnetron. This time, he put an egg underneath the tube. Moments later, it exploded, covering his face in egg. The following day, Percy Spencer brought in corn kennels, popped them with his new invention, and shared some popcorn with the entire office. The microwave oven was born. End quote. Of course, more work was done to contain the microwaves that were cooking Spencer's test subjects. Imagine all the time that has been freed and the microwave brownies that have been cooked, all thanks to Percy Spencer and his curious mind. That's the final story of this week's blog, and the final testament to my new mantra. Thank God for mistakes. Thank God for penicillin, chocolate chip cookies, and microwaves for that matter. Our silver liners challenge is this. The next time you make a mistake, try and look at it from a different angle. What have you learned? And maybe, just maybe, is there a success here that you're missing? Feel free to share your experiences in the comments of our website, www.survivors guide to hell, or on our Facebook page. This is a podcast version of our sister production, A Survivor's Guide to Hell, the blog. This podcast gives you a way to access our content when you're driving, cleaning house, or baking cookies. But if you'd like to see the videos and pictures that often accompany our posts, like a picture of the first microwave, check out our website at www.survivorsguidetohell.com, where you'll also find much more information, including our storytelling code of ethics. We're always looking for cool new stories. If you have something to share, please visit our site and drop us a line. And remember, if you liked this episode, please subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. We'd like to thank Kitsa, Crowinder, Mild Wild, and Man Out of Town for some of this week's audio. Another shout out to Jimmy Tinknocker and to the Howell Family Trust for everything they've done to support us. Believe it or not, some of the best contributions we receive don't have anything to do with money. If you would like to contribute to our podcast, please visit the support portion of our site and see what you can do to help without spending a dime. Last but not least, our cheesy joke of the week. A gingerbread man goes to the doctor for a hurt knee. The doctor says, have you tried icing it? <laughs> oh, cookie jokes. Thank you and have an excellent Monday.